Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you to this uh, workshop. Today we are going to be talking about Catapult, and uh, I promise you this would be a fun-filled day. There's a lot of fun things we'll talk about, uh, and when you go out in the afternoon today, I'm sure you'll know more about Catapult, but also you'll know more about what we're planning to do and how you can contribute to it. So uh, before we start with the, uh, with the talks, I'd like to just go over the plan for today. There we go. The plan for today. Uh, you have it in front of you, I believe, in paper form. Uh, of course, we'll, I'll introduce Doug very shortly, but then Derek would come and talk about some of our uh, deployments that we are doing, which would be interesting to you. We have Bill here as well from uh, TAC, who will be talking about tax contribution to this project. Uh, we have two research talks by Eric and Ju Young. And uh, there'll be interesting applications of what you can do uh, with Catapult. And then we'll move on to the afternoon session. And this is a time when many of you would be talking. And this is an ever-increasing list, which is good. We are really happy. Right now, we have 11 people here. Uh, if you're not here, that doesn't mean you cannot. Uh, if you are, uh, you're feeling moved to actually talk about your research, and your uh, plans for using Catapult, uh, you're most welcome. Uh, send me an email uh, with the slides. We want to put all the slides here so that the switchover is quick. This is just five minutes to seven minutes. So just send me your slides if you haven't, and if you're in this list. If you're not in this list, even then, if you want to talk about your project and plans, send me a slide or two, and I'll, I'll put them in the lineup. Uh, also, when you come in, there are these uh, release forms you need to sign. So uh, during lunch or after that, just sign these so that we can actually record these uh, videos and then put them on the site for other people who are not here to see. So that's our plan. We'll be done around 3-ish, 3 p.m. And then if you want to stick around, talk to us, talk to amongst yourself, uh, we, we, we can do that as well. Now, Mariam actually, uh, asked me a very important question early morning. She said, are you uh, associated with FPGA for long? <laughs> and I said, no, you don't know me. Yes, the community is very close. You know, you know each other a lot. But of course, I'm not. Uh, my role is being a program manager for this project for outreach. And uh, uh, essentially, which means I interact with you, I talk to you, see if you're all happy. If you need anything, I come back and push Doug and Derek a lot. So, uh, but that's me. Uh, but one person and the rest of the research team you know very well. They're part of the community. Now we have uh, Derek, who's one of the mainstays of this project, and he's going to talk about how you all and the larger academic community can use Catapult for your own research. Uh, Derek is a principal architect at uh, Microsoft. Uh, he works at Bing. And of course, his interests are in FPGA and data center applications. Uh, he's uh, also a professor at UT Austin. And we're happy and lucky that he's right here with us. Uh, before going to UT Austin, he was a system architect and lead for performance modeling at Avinci. Is that uh, Avinci? Right? Yeah. Uh, system, which is a manufacturer of terabit core uh, routers. Uh, he received his PhD, SM, and uh, SP degrees in electrical engineering and computer science from MIT. Uh, Derek, thank you. Thank you, Arjuman. All right, so this academic program is actually joint between Altera and Microsoft. Um, Altera has actually donated a significant, uh, well, 250 FPGAs to this project, which I discovered are worth $1.8 million when we tried to ship them to China. So they're, <laughs> it's quite a, quite a substantial donation. Um, yeah, Doug and Arjuman's actually been really the one who's been driving all of the uh, all of the hard work within this academic program. So, um, thanks a lot there. So, all right, let's see. So, thanks Arjuman for all of that. Okay. 
So, all right, good. All right, so the high-level goals of the academic program are to provide access to FPGA and enable platforms at scale beyond what's normally available to academics. It's also to kickstart catapult, the Catapult ecosystem, Windows plus FPGA research. So we want to do hardware, IP, infrastructure, and software. We want all of these components, not just you know, an IP core to accelerate Smith-Waterson. Right. We want to reduce startup costs and maximize research. So one of the problems we all have when we first start doing FPGA research is how do you get the tools, how do you set up the tools, how do you figure out the licenses, how do you get the machines, how do you program the machines the first time. I mean, it's for everyone who started up in this, we do the same things over and over again. And actually, we see this for every new student that comes. Right? They have to you know, essentially figure out how to do all of this. We also want to establish research relationships with Microsoft. Right? So the long-term goal is, is that people who are working in these platforms, we can work, Microsoft can work with them and potentially use their, their work to influence the, the actual product lines. So an overview of the project is, is this jointly funded by Altera and Microsoft? And some system administration tool servers are funded by NSF under this project called Fabric, which I'll give you a brief introduction to in the next slide. We're going to provide access to Catapult card systems and infrastructure, and we want to build a nice outreach and community around all of this. So fairly straightforward. So Fabric is this NSF-funded project. Um, basically, it's to put high-end FPGA systems uh, and the tools and the servers into TAC, which is our uh, supercomputer center at University of Texas. I'm the PI, but actually a lot of help from Arvin, James, Joel Emmer, uh, Sheelan, and, and John Warsnack. So it's open to all, including industry. This is kind of the weird thing. Most programs are not available to industry, where industry can actually come and log in and actually use the, the, the tools and the infrastructure. The reason why we like this is because a lot of academics do work. Uh, so for instance, we've done work uh, at UT where we want to share it with industry, but then they need a blue spec license. And the blue spec license will cost them an ungodly amount. And they don't want to pay that amount to just kick the tires. Right? So this allows them to actually run on the same machines that you run on, uh, use the same, both the servers, the tools, as well as the actual hardware. All right? So this gives them a nice way to, to play. Uh, it's professionally managed by tax staff. We have Bill here who will we'll talk a little bit about that. The cost to you, this is the way we prevent uh, people coming doing real commercial development, is all the work has to be open source. And when you actually start using the, the, our tools and actually running on the FPGAs, it's you, we consider that to be distributed to us. That means we can look at your code, we can publish it. Uh, what we do is we do agree not to publish for one year after you uh, submit to us because you may be writing a paper. If you want to negotiate a little longer time, that's fine, but we can look at it immediately. All right. And so see openfabric.org for our instructions on how to get access. Huh? We are basically the PIs, the, ta uh, the TAC administrators, and the people who own the CAD tools. So it turns out the people like Altera, they want to be able to see what you're doing. But that's effectively. Doug. I am not wearing my Microsoft hat at the moment, sorry. But the problem is because we're putting this in TAC and we're using the NSF money to support some of the system administration. Yeah, I had to say that. So. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I look at the website for for more details on that. Yeah. So yeah, this that I was not. This is not Microsoft that would be looking at it, but it's the people who own the the CAD tools mostly are the ones who are concerned about this. Yeah. So what we're going to provide is, you know, all of, a lot of the stuff that we all have trouble doing, right? So PCIe device driver, how many of us have messed around with those, right? Turns out we have a one that's going to be deployed, you know, for real production use. So uh, initially, it's going to be compiled, encrypted, and, and, and also our shell, which Doug described briefly, which basically provides an abstraction to all of that FPGA hardware, that uh, all of the interfaces to the outside world. So the DRAM controller, the PCIe controller, and uh, the, the, uh, the, the links to the outside off, across the Taurus network. These are initially going to be compiled, encrypted. We're discussing source code ask, access under NDA with lawyers. And hopefully, over the long term, we can make it open source. But this is something that you know, Microsoft considers to be somewhat secret. So we're going to have to, we're going to, have to work with lawyers on that. We'll provide some Hello World programs as well to get you started. 
Um, Altera tools, including Open, uh, OpenCL service to run them on. So Altera, we are working on, Altera is working on, and we're working with them to get OpenCL up on these boards. Problem, we, we, there's, there's some barriers to that, but uh, Dave and I and uh, Scott have been working on this. So we actually need to get you these boards, right? So uh, remote access to clusters of servers. And all of these are accessible with a one-page proposal to catapult at Microsoft.com. All right, so that's what we're looking for. Some funding will be available. This is, it's gonna be limited, but we'll, we'll also be funding some research grants as well. This part's not under the catapult. This is not under, this yes. Is, this is now, is so sorry, I should have, yeah, <laughs> clearly. I'm only Microsoft. <laughs> the, the UT is, that's a, that's a legacy award that's still running, but does provide, you know, pays for some of the tax support, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I've actually thought about that. I do need to buy a Microsoft hat, so. But I'm wearing my Microsoft shirt, so. I'm not gonna change shirts, so. Okay, so in terms of numbers, um, as I said, Altair has been very kind to donate 250 uh, FPGAs. Those are being put on boards right now. Uh, so basically those one-page proposals would get you kind of onesies, twosies per professor. If you happen to be at an institution that's got more professors, perhaps you could get together and, and propose more, right, uh, for some, from, you know, some joint research. So uh, the, the big installation is going to be four racks of 96 catapult-equipped servers each. All right, so this is almost 400 servers. This is going into TAC. So if you go to TAC, they actually have space for this. This is something that if, if we were to give a rack to any individual professor, you would have a lot of problems. These are big, they're very noisy, they take a lot of power, it's, it's expensive and difficult to maintain these. So TAC is, they're real experts at this because they have the number seven supercomputer in the world, along with many other computers in, in the facility. Um, FPGAs in each half rack of 48 servers are gonna be connected by the 2D Taurus that Doug spoke very briefly about. So it's gonna be four uh, two times 6.25 gig transceiver links. And we'll have all that cabling that he showed uh, to connect them together as well. Resource allocation inherited and adapted from the supercomputing world. So what will happen is, is you'll sign up for an account, you'll be given time on a machine, you'll be running on that machine, and when you're done, you will leave the machine and the next person can run on it. The nice thing about this, as we all know as professors, is you know, we'll apply for a, a, a piece of equipment. We may get, you know, a $50,000, $100,000 piece of equipment. We use it for six months, and uh, after that, it, it gathers dust. So by having this in one central uh, facility, lots of people can go and access it. We're also going and putting some of the servers into, into EPFL and T ETH. The issue with that is they are not going to be open, so I'm not really talking about those right now. All right, so the outreach communities, well, there are gonna be workshops that are gonna be held. This is the first of the workshops, obviously. There's gonna be community wiki repository email list. Right now, we're starting with the research.microsoft.com slash catapult to start. There'll be instructions there on how to sign up for the email list, and then we'll have the wiki set up in the very near future. Um, there's gonna be contests that'll be run. I'm hoping to start the first contest in the fall, where you know James actually brought up the good point that this could be his uh, project for his uh, class, so he wouldn't even have to grade them. Um, we will have, <laughs> hopefully, we'll, we'll we'll gather members of the community to help uh, to help judge the contest. But fundamentally, that the goal is just to run a contest, you know, fairly often, perhaps once a semester, uh, which will then provide incentive for students uh, and and frankly anyone to to try to uh, to develop on these FPJ platforms. What else should we be doing? Please give us suggestions on what else you might want to, what we, you think we should be doing within the, the outreach and the community building. All right, so the hopeful future of all of this is a full FPGA ecosystem that drastically lowers the barriers to entry for FPGA research, teaching, and even eventually commercial activity, right? So a full system, not just FPGA accelerators in isolation, an active community using that ecosystem, right? So shared IP documentation courseware. We've all done research, we've all done great you know, IP blocks or, or infrastructure, but it's very rare that we see them shared. And so we're hoping that we can, we can encourage all of that. We want research impact on Microsoft and the cloud industry. Right? This is something that, that a lot of academics have trouble doing is actually bridging an industry. That's not always true. Vaughn's had a lot of impact on industry, but among others. But uh, this is something, and, and Jason, of course, too. But this is something which you know, maybe by, because FPGAs are so quick, we can you know, adapt IP blocks very quickly that we could potentially bring things in. And upgrades to future systems over time, the hope over the time, we don't have commitment from Microsoft on this, but 
um, you know, maybe we can get some of those next generation systems in in a year or two, right? Something on that order. All right, any questions? No? Okay. Was that right. a It will be one system, I'm sorry? The version one. It'll be the version one system that's distributed, that's right. So the, the approval for all this funding got, we, we got approval for the funding before people started talking about the second generation. And so in fact what we're doing is those 400 machines, we actually purchased from Bing. Those are, 400 came from the 1,632 pilot machines and are being shipped to TAC. Next per week, week after, sometime yeah. soon. Yeah. 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 But they're actually taking them out of a data, a big data center physically. Right. And I might, I might add that the, the B1 part is quite different. Yeah, the, the FPGAs are the same, and the network connectivity with the rack is actually you know, a little bit more interesting in the forest as long as we can purchase it. So I think it's not B2, for, for Microsoft problems, point, provides a lot of value from a research perspective. I don't think it's their system. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have heard a lot of uh, uh, about TAC, and really this is a, uh, there are partners in Ukraine, in addition to Altera. So uh, we have uh, Bill with us today. He is the director of high performance computing at TAC. Uh, he's going to talk about what TAC and Microsoft are doing for Catapult. Uh, well, he spent many years at, uh, at uh, UT Austin. He has a PhD from UT Austin in aerospace engineering. I actually didn't know that. Right? Yeah, I'm not a CS person or a computing person by but background. But he has the HPC uh, group there, so that's interesting. And uh, so he'll be talking about uh, our interaction with TAC and how you and TAC would interact for that. Yeah. My, uh, my talk has blossomed. I was com complaining a little this morning from stand up and say three things about TAC, you know, starting at the the thing over at the Chihuly exhibit um, to 15 minutes on the agenda. So I didn't really have a chance to prepare any slides, but I'll say a few things about TAC and sort of some of my goals at this workshop and meeting folks. Um, so if you don't know who we are, we're an organized research unit of the University of Texas at Austin. Um, we're a standalone research computing organization. We don't report up through ITS or anything like that. Um, we're a world leader in research computing. Uh, we have the number seven system on the top 500 list. You can say what you like about that benchmark, but it says we have a big computer and we kind of know how to run them. Not Microsoft Azure Bing scale computing, right? We don't have millions of servers, but we have about 10 or 12,000 systems under management um, in one cluster or another. Um, biggest one's got 6,400 nodes. Um, we're a hub for large-scale computation at, at UT, but also within the University of Texas system, within the state of Texas, and we're primarily funded by the National Science Foundation, so um, our, our big systems come through NSF money, and we offer open compute research platforms to people all over the United States and their collaborators all over the world. Um, so. We have more than 40 petabytes of uh, data under management, which is, again, small for Microsoft and Google scale, but um, it's pretty big for research scale computing. Um, and we try to have state-of-the-art facilities and expert staff. Um, so I just have a few notes here instead of slides. Um, we've been running, as, as Derek mentioned, some FPGA systems in the Fabric Project for Derek for a long time. We have some other interesting systems coming in recently from a different vendor. Um, from IBM that'll include Power 8 and FPGA, and so we've been doing this kind of stuff um, under Derek's funding for uh, quite some time, um, and we hope to continue that independently of the Catapult work. 
um, as well. Um, as Derek mentioned, Microsoft is going to ship us almost 400 um, of these Bing servers, so they'll be identical to what, because they are what was run in Bing, um, and they'll be shipping soon. Um, Microsoft is going to sort of manage the allocation of time on them. We'll have some sort of website or something that um, will get spun up shortly to help figure out who to give the time to, um, and then we'll run that through TAC. Um, it's a Windows-based environment, so that'll be new and interesting for us as well. We've primarily run all of these systems on, on Linux, um, and so we'll, we'll work together with the community to figure out how to make it uh, accessible and usable to folks um, as time goes on. Um, I guess the other thing that I, I wanted to figure out is I've got some sort of questions that I'd like to answer while I'm here. Um, so, you know, what's the best way to run this program? Does the allocation model work? Do, does, you know, just telling you that you have so much time, how do we record that? You know, that'll be a thing that we have to integrate with Microsoft and the community to make sure that um, the system is approachable and usable. Um, you know, what does the community want as part of the resource? You know, it, there is the catapult shell and the things that that entails, but there's also just an FPGA sitting on a, a Windows server that's accessible to you. And so would having bare access to the FPGA be something we wanted to do under the project? Or not? Well, what does it mean to have a remote access to FPGA instead of it sitting desk side? Um, those are the kind of questions that we're going to need to work together to figure out how to manage and model. Um, do we need some sort of early user program? We do this a lot in supercomputing where uh, we get some people who are friendly and willing to tell us the problems that they have running on the system before they go to the press and say, you know, Microsoft and TAC are terrible and they did all of this horrible stuff on the system and it doesn't work and all that kind of stuff. And so we usually start a few weeks or months in advance of putting the system in production with a handful of people who are willing to kick the tires, try it out, dedicate a little time to it, but also um, tell us, tell Microsoft and TAC the problems first um, in order that we can sort of sort, sort through them, work them out, and make sure that everything is um, good for the rest of the community when everybody comes online. And this can be a little painful, but I think it's also fruitful. You get early access to the system and um, benefit of um, you know, having early time um, to work on it. Um, those were the basic things that I wanted to say. I'm sure there are a lot of questions about how this program is going to run. Um, and to be perfectly frank, we don't all quite know yet. Um, so I think there'll be some opportunities to figure out, um, you know, how has Microsoft been working with Bing resources and how does that translate into a program that an academic community can, can use. So that's really all I had to say. I'm happy to take any questions or we can have an early break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To access what kind of devices? I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So that's a Doug and Derek question. Um, yeah, it's a great question. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy. It, you know, there's a node. It runs Windows. You're going to be able to have a remote connection to that box, so you will be able to, you know, type away and access the resources from the CPU side. Um, I don't know what the connectivity typically is for FPGAs sitting on a PCI Express bus. So what does the catapult shell do, Derek? So the initial, <laughs> what we're going to provide initially will not provide that capability. So um, whether we provide that or whether someone in the community would like to provide that, you know, we'd love to talk with anyone who would like to provide that kind of capability. Yeah, we, we, we just haven't done it. And so I, you know, we, we believe that it, I think it's possible to talk to the SSDs. So. You, you guys push that through some driver now. You push data from the SSD through the CPU, through a driver into yeah, the, the FPGA. FPGA and the SSD don't talk directly today. Right. And I, what's that? But that's part of the driver, essentially, now on the Windows side? Well, the, 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 think of the, the storage stack to hard disk and the SSD and the FPGA just completely separate. Yeah. Right? And if you want to do something more interesting, then we have. You have to write that out. Right, but if you want to do something less interesting, if you just want to get data off the disk and ship it to the FPGA, you have a way to do that. Memory buffer, and then you ship it over to the FPGA. Right. Okay. Yes. Yes. Is there a local memory to the FPGA? Yes. How big is that? It's it's uh, four fast gigabytes and four not so fast. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and that's SRAM. Eight media DRAM. It's DRAM. It, it should run at 533. Um, 
okay. rather than 667. 667 doesn't work. Or, or fast and poor slow. <laughs> or fast and poor slow. 667 works on one thing, but not the other. Yeah. So, yeah. I want to feel too bad about that. Other boards that work with have the exact same issues. So yeah. They say yeah. don't use channel three. <laughs> <laughs> embarrassed that we're shipping out a board at the community with the second channel is great, but it's, it's fixable. But, we didn't fix it. but thank you, Greg, for the comment. <laughs> <laughs>